Could Maryland be successful with Billy Edwards? You are a Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, video content creator for 247 Sports and InsideMarylandSports.com and host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you guys for making us part of your day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Could Maryland be successful with Billy Edwards at quarterback? It seems like for the past couple of years, Billy Edwards has been the backup for Maryland football. And I thought for a while he was going to be the one to take over the job when Talia was gone. I was always unsure of Billy Edwards because we never really got to see him play. We only got to see him play in spots. We did get him, we get we did get a couple starts from Billy Edwards two years ago, not last year, but the year before that, where he did have some decent overall games where he saw some of the stuff he was able to do overall, but it was still in question kind of what Billy Edwards was for us, how good he could be. When he did play in 2022, he had 28 attempts, um, excuse me, 46 attempts with 28 completions, and he had a completion percentage of 60%, 308 yards between the two games he played with a 6.7 average and three touchdowns overall. So fairly decent when he played, not a horrible completion percentage. The thing is that what excites you most about if you want to start Billy Edwards at quarterback, it is his running style and his running game that he's able to bring to Maryland football. And I would guess that would be have the ability to open up the run game overall in terms of getting Roman Hemby loose and getting Colby McDonald loose. So when I think of can Maryland be successful with Billy Edwards at quarterback, I first think about that run game and how bad I thought it was last year. At times, Roman Hemby had a horrible down year. I've talked about it over the last couple of of the uh, last couple of podcasts, Roman Hemby didn't play good ball last year overall in terms of the total landscape, in terms of what we saw him do in his first year as a starter compared to last year, his second year as a starter. We expected him to improve. We expected the numbers to get better, but they really didn't do that. But if you implement Billy Edwards into the quarterback position, you change everything in terms of of your identity as an offense. You change into a team that wants to run the ball more. You're going to rely on your guys up front. You're going to heavily rely on Roman Hemby. I think if Billy Edwards starts, I think it is a lot better for Roman Hemby in terms of his production. If you were like, all I care about is how many yards Roman Hemby gets, you would want Billy Edwards to be the starter because That's what Billy Edwards is going to be. It's going to be a lot of read option stuff. It's going to be a lot of QB run stuff. But that naturally opens up the run game for Roman Hamby and, of course, Chloe McDonald as well, whoever our number three running back is going to be next year. But we saw last year the run game not be really that great with Antoine Littleton as well, who is now transferred. But can the Terps be successful that way? I'm going to say no. If I'm going to take a stance on a a way that the Terps can be successful and what I've seen them do, I don't see us being very successful that way in terms of being more of a running-oriented offense with more QB run game and less traditional passing game type of stuff. I don't think that's how we're built because I don't think we're dominant up front. I think the teams that do that, they know how dominant they are up front. They know they have guys on the offensive line that are among the best in the Big Ten. When I think of teams that can play that way, I think of Michigan. I think of Penn State. They line up five NFL dudes up front, first-round draft picks up front, second-round draft picks up front, and then they, they can run the ball all day in the Big Ten, but I don't think we're built like that, and those teams might have might not have the best receivers on the outside. Like, I think about Michigan and Penn State, I don't think there's a real discrepancy in terms of the receiver talent on the outside. I could say that Maryland could have equal receiving talent to both of those schools. I would say Maryland's receiving talent last year was better than Penn State's overall, and so the way I think we're built, I don't know if we could be successful. I'm going to say 
I don't think we would be successful with Billy Edwards at quarterback because he's not going to do what you want with the passing game with our strength on the offensive side of the ball. And our strength right now is having Ty Felton on the outside as long as having Caden Prather on the outside. We'll see who else steps up in that wide receiver room. But right now, that's our strength. And if Billy Edwards isn't going to be able to get them the ball and get some of those intermediate routes going and some of those deeper throws that we want Caden Prather and Ty Felton to get in those chunk plays that they've been able to create last year with Talia, what we saw what they were able to do with Talia, then if he's not able to do that, I think that takes away what we want to do overall. And I mean, I feel like I have reasonable evidence to point at to say that I don't know if he's going to be able to have that efficient type of passing game that comes close to what Talia did overall. Because if we look at the numbers and what he did when he started the Music City Bowl game, and yes, that was a bowl game. It was the last game of the year, and he didn't have, like, a whole offseason to be the starter. Like, whatever you want to say about that. But at the end of the day, in the Music City Bowl game, he went 6 of 20 for 126 yards. His big chunk play was a screen pass to Roman Hemby. I, I'm not really putting too much stock into that overall. And he went, so he went six for 20. That's 30% completion rate. That's not going to get it done. And you saw it. There was a lot of, not, nothing came as natural in the passing game. He's not as natural as a passer. But you ask yourself, does his rushing ability make up for that? And I don't know, because his rushing ability was a huge difference in that Auburn game. He was the leading rusher in that game where he goes 13 carries for 50 yards and a touchdown. It's like, does that run game, does that what he brings to the run game, does that make up for the passing? Can he become a good enough passer where it's like, okay, he might not be quite as good of a passer as maybe like MJ Morris will be on our team or maybe Cameron Edge will be. Maybe he can't spin the rock quite as well as them, but he's become a better passer where we want that running ability now, and we think we need that running ability now with Talia gone. Because I've said it, I do think the Terps have to be able to run the ball better with these whoever is that quarterback this year. But I'm just unsure if Billy Edwards is the answer to that quarterback spot. And I'm going to go ahead and say he's not. I don't think the Terps will be more successful with Billy Edwards at quarterback. And I don't think Coach Loxley is sold on Edwards at all. We brought in MJ Morse for a reason. And Cameron Edge was getting reps in the bowl game for a reason. And I know we like to play a lot of players in the bowl games and all that stuff, but Cameron Edge looked pretty good in that bowl game. While I saw Billy Edwards win the MVP of that bowl game, he won the MVP. It's the thumbnail of this video. He won the MVP of the Music City Bowl game, but I think you could read a lot more into it, and you saw a lot of troubles getting our guys the ball, and that's not what our receivers are used to. That's not what Gaddis is used to. That's not what Maryland is used to, and I don't know if our offensive line is built to just run and run and go quarterback power there, read option there. I don't know if we're built for that. We would be going closer to what Big Ten football has traditionally been, but I think that kind of messes with our strength a little bit. I don't know if we quite have even the tight ends up front to block that type of way, which I'm going to talk about next. I'm going to talk about the tight end room next, so make sure you, you stay for that. But I'm unsure if I love Billy Edwards at the quarterback spot, and I think – I think when it comes down to it, this is a way too early guess. I don't think he'll be the starter. I'm pretty sure. And I don't think Maryland would be particularly successful. I just think he's too inconsistent passing the ball. And Maryland's defense is not overpowered this year. Our secondary looks a little bit suspect going into next year. We'll see if guys can step up. We've recruited some really top-end players in that room, but those guys are still young. A lot of them are freshmen. But we lost – Basically, all of our corners are starting outside corners and a safety. So Maryland could give up some more points, and we might have to score more points, and we might have to get chunks in the passing game. And when your two best all Big Ten players are at the receiver position that make plays downfield, which we saw in the bowl game, when we saw Cameron Edge have one of the better throws I've seen him throw over the top, one of the better balls I've seen all year on that deep pass to um. 
Caden Prather on the deep shot in the bowl game. When I've seen those type of plays and I've seen Talia make big shot after big shot to whether it was Ty Felton on the outside, whether it was Caden Prather, I saw Talia do that over and over again. And I saw that was a big reason why we were able to be successful. So I don't think we can be successful playing that play style that Billy Edwards that you're going to have to change your playbook to. I could be wrong. I'll be interested to see who wins the quarterback battle. But I don't think Maryland football will be particularly successful with Billy Edwards at quarterback. How will the tight end room look next year? Will it be okay? And can the Terps still be successful in that room? I will tell you about that after this ad from Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination from four sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experience, and it starts with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep on date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. The Terps tight end room will have to rely on youth, and that could be scary for Maryland's tight end room. I'm just going to outline this tight end room. I am unsure about this tight end room, to be honest. Going into next year, I, I like the talent in some of the spots, but I don't like the depth. I don't like it nearly as much as what I liked last year's tight end room. And it's a little bit suspect, in my opinion. And the tight end room has been a pretty big part of our off, our offense. We like to run a lot of 12 personnel, one running back, two tight ends. We like, we like to do a lot of that type of stuff. And if you don't have two tight ends that you love or you like, or one that you love and one that you like, then it's hard to kind of do some of those things and to get in heavy, more heavy personnel sets that I think Maryland would like to do some of to get some of that run game going and create some easier stuff in the for their quarterbacks. But I, I just am unsure if this room is going to be able to get it done. I honestly thought for sure we would land somebody in the portals. For sure Maryland would add someone after losing a couple of guys in that room, after losing Corey Dytus, Corey Dytus is in the portal. Corey Dytus is gone. And Corey Dytus was an explosive threat in that tight end room. He could do things that you're not really supposed to do at the tight end position. And he was that kind of hybrid wide receiver tight end type of talent that a lot of teams like these days, that current kind of tight end that can give you both worlds where – they can give you the speed kind of of the wide receiver, but they also can give you the bigger body of a tight end. And he wasn't a huge guy, but he, I always like to say, I thought Corey Deitches was a matchup nightmare and it made it really hard to match up because you had to worry about Felton and you had to worry about Keenan Prather. And then you had to worry about Jason Jones in the slot. And then it's like, oh, Corey Deitches is one of the fastest, most explosive tight ends in the country. And it's like, how do we match up with all this? How do we deal with all these different players overall. So it's, it was hard to deal with Maryland's offense, and I think a big part of that was because of what Corey Dutch has brought. I thought he opened up the offense for a lot of different players. But now we look at the new Maryland tight end room, and it's like we got Preston Howard is clearly the favorite in that room. And I love Preston because I think he is so talented. I know Preston, and I think he's the top-end type of player. I think he does a lot of really good things in 
for in the tight end spot, and he's young still, and he's still learning the ins and outs of the tight end position. But t- Preston is a freakish type of athlete at like six six. He he makes these plays that you're like what the heck, like, he can do that? Like, this guy has a chance to do some big things in Maryland. This guy has a chance to honestly play in the NFL and play at the next level. I don't know if he realizes how good he actually is for Maryland football. And in spots, you saw it. I remember in the spring game um, last year, he made a catch. I was like, what the heck? Like, he made that catch? Like, that? that's a crazy catch. About one year ago today, I guess, now we're about to watch a new spring game. And we'll see how the tight end room looks. But he made one of the craziest catches. You'll see a Maryland player make. He's made great catches. And then he, you see him in game a couple of times. And you're like, oh, wow, he can do that? Because he's 6'5", he's catching the ball, and then he's running away from guys. I remember the Rutgers game, he had two receptions for 49 yards with a long of 26. The Nebraska game, he had two receptions. Penn State, he had two receptions. He's been doing really good things in spots, and he's clearly the tight end room, and I think he's going to be a really good player for us, but he is still inexperienced. He hasn't been the tight end one yet. He's always been kind of the backup, and he hasn't had been relied on as much as he's going to have to be going into next year, and can we rely on Preston as much as I hope we can? I don't know yet because he hasn't had to do it yet, but You know what they say. It's next man up. Corey Deitches enters the portal. It's next man up for Maryland football. So I'm confident in Preston Howard's size and his ability to hopefully block at the size and his how fast he is and athletic for that size and his speed to be able to separate and get open. I think he still needs to get better in terms of finding spots and zone and zone coverage. I think he could do a better job at that. But if in terms of like underneath, routes where he's running away from his defender he's really good at that but I do think he still has spots to improve but that's a tight end room that's that's some youth and I'm unsure of how good he's going to be as a tight end one I'm sure he's going to do good things but it's still it's still up in the air how good he could be and then tight end two is expected to be Dylan Wade I'm really unsure about Dylan Wade. He made a play, a couple plays in the Music City Bowl game that looked good, but I don't know a whole lot about him as a player because I haven't gotten to see him play. I mean, obviously Maryland recruited him for a reason. He was a little bit on the, I, I would think, the skinnier side in the Music City Bowl game when I saw him play. Hopefully he gained some weight because you want your tight end, too, to definitely be able to block as well but I do think he can be a pretty good receiver talent but he was a freshman last year and is still just a freshman I guess right now since it's still that current school year for them so he's still a freshman going into I guess his sophomore year it would be for him and so I'm unsure of how he will be as well as a tight end two having to play a lot like I said Maryland likes to run a lot of 12 personnel one running back two tight ends all that type of stuff they like to do those type of things so how successful will Dylan Wade be he's a young kid hasn't done very much and I don't know how good he's going to be as a tight end two I don't know how much of a strength it'll be for the offense I don't know if it'll hold the offense back overall but you're looking at it we don't have Talia anymore I just talked about Billy Edwards but also MJ Morris Cameron Edge whoever wins that quarterback position having a good tight end a guy that can be a safety blanket can really help and I don't think Maryland really has that and after those two it's really up in the air I guess AJ Sanimsky, I talked to him. I really like him as a kid. He's he's a, supposed to be more of a blocker, and he can do some things in the blocking game. He's a really big body in there as well. But I'm still unsure of the youth of this tight end room. I'm unsure of how it'll go. But we'll see in the spring game. That's one of the things I'm definitely going to be looking at. Can Deshaun Harris-Smith fix his shot this offseason? I will answer that question after this ad from eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience is what brings home the winning trophy and is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts 
for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. It's no secret Deshaun Harris Smith's shot has been pretty horrible this year. Can he fix it? I don't know how much of it is a mechanical issue in terms of his shooting mechanics and how much it's like, oh, we need to fix the thing too. It's definitely not the prettiest shot I've ever seen, but it's not like the ugliest shot I've ever seen as well. But do I think Deshaun Harris Smith can fix the shot this offseason? I do. I really do. How much these guys in the offseason put in so much work. Like these basketball players in terms of like personal workouts, They'll have it like every single day. They'll work with whatever trainer they like. And I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that um, Kevin Willard has Deshaun Harris-Smith working with someone this offseason to fix that shot up, which is going to have to happen. He shot 16.5% so far this year from the three-point line, and he shot 60% so far this year from the foul line. It's pretty bad now. It's, it's pretty horrible for a guard to shoot that way. And you're never going to become one of a, a good player in the Big Ten unless you can improve those numbers. I can't explain how important it is for him to fix that shot, for him to fix that three-point shot, to fix the free throws, to fix everything. Every part of it needs to be fixed. But I do think it can be done because I've seen it get done, but I've also seen it not get done. I've seen players really struggle to be able to fix the shot. But to me, it's more up to how much does the player want to be able to fix it? How much does the player want to be able to fix the mechanics of it? Whatever needs to be fixed. Because like I, I like to think about Lonzo Ball in this situation. Lonzo Ball, if you remember, had that really weird shot from – down low and it like came across his body it was a really weird thing and it worked for a while and he was a decent shooter in high school and in college it kind of went downhill a little bit he was definitely inconsistent I don't he definitely shot better than 16.5 percent uh from what Deshaun from the percentage that Deshaun Harris Smith shot he definitely shot better than that in college but in the NBA, it wasn't really working. It was definitely super inconsistent, and Lonzo Ball wanted to fix it. And he completely changed the form. He went from going from, like, a weird side angle of it to going just, like, right from the middle and it looking a lot better now to the shot being a pretty shot. And he's now a good shooter, and he hasn't played in a while because he's been injured. But I think that's a good example of someone that has fixed their shot. There's also examples of guys that haven't when you think of a Ben Simmons type where – You would think after all this time, he would have fixed it. It's their job to fix it. You would thought the shot would have gotten better, but it really hasn't gotten that much better for Ben Simmons at all. So I'm looking at it, and I've seen both sides, but I really think it comes down to how much do you really want to fix it and how much confidence you have in your coach to be able to fix it and how much reps you're going to put in. And he's one of the hardest workers on this Maryland team, so I really do think he can – fix that shot I really do think it can get a lot better like I said I don't think mechanically it's like the worst shot I've seen I bet there's some tweaks and some stuff that they want to fix about it but mechanically it's not that bad of a shot it's a it's it's not a pretty shot but it's like a decent looking shot you wouldn't be like oh that's a horrible shot like if he was if it was going in it there wouldn't be really any problems with it overall but it hasn't been going in and guys I like to say guys aren't as naturally gifted shooting the ball and I think he's one of those guys and you have to work really hard not even to get it to an elite level but to get it to like an just a manageable level and that's what it's going to be about I don't think it's ever going to be his strength as a player and when you shoot that poor percentage from the three in your first year that's going to give you confidence effects for the next couple of years it's going to be harder to get the confidence back to be able to shoot the ball but i do think it's something he'll work on and I, and he has taken the shots a lot of times i have seen him um, pass up on some i've seen him take shots that he shouldn't have and i've seen him not take shots that he um should have probably taken a lot of he usually takes it when he's open though which i do like that he's showing that he will take the shot but it's something he has to work on over these over i mean we only have one more game in the regular season i think you 
take the shots that you can and see if it can get better. I mean, it can really go only up from 16%. It can't really go down from that mark. So next year, I hope you can become a better shooter because that's going to be a fundamental thing in our success overall. That's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe. We're here every day talking Maryland football and basketball. So thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.